Ah. So everyone who's driving on the roads today has grown up with combustion cars like these. Uh, you know, what, what they look like, we all know what they look like, what they sound like, what they smell like, and we've all heard and sometimes, unfortunately, actually experienced first-hand horror stories of things going really wrong. You know, for example, you know, just engine breakdowns, oil leaks, clutches, gearboxes, you know, and huge unwelcome garage bills. But what do you expect with a piece of engineering that has simply thousands of moving parts. I mean, you know, that's, we're all used to that. That's been normal for years. Well, EVs are different, not fundamentally, but they are different. They don't have as many moving parts for a start, and they're full of very complex electronic technology. And if you listen to some voices, they could, it sounds like they could be very, very costly to fix. But is that really the case? And if you need to get your EV fixed, does your local garage know what they're doing? Well, I'm here today with Peter Melville from Hevra, which is the Hybrid and Electric Vehicle Repair Alliance. And they are doing this incredible work looking after cars for people like you and me, electric cars, really exciting. So, Peter, welcome. And can you, can you just tell me about what Hevra is, why it started and what it's all about? Yeah, of course. So, um, just to give a bit of background, I've, I've spent my life um, repairing awkward electrical problems on behalf of other garages. And when you spend your life going in and out of garages, you, you tend to put them in, in three categories. You have the good ones who want to do a really good job for their customers and they do the training and they get the tools and they do the research before they do the jobs. Um, you then get the not interested garages who, um, it used to be they didn't do fuel injection, then it was they didn't do diesel, and now it's they don't do EV. And then you get the third camp where they don't really know anything about it, but they have a go anyway. And obviously they're, they're the real ones to avoid. So the motivation behind Hevra, which was um, further brought on by a, a um, bad experience a family member had with their repairing their electric car, was to get the good garages good at EV and uh, let the customers, the EV driving community, know who the good garages are. Now that sounds like a really good thing, but one of the, I mean, really key things about electric vehicles, which I've become more aware of the longer I've had them, is, this, is the fact that the amount of stuff that used to go wrong with my petrol cars was phenomenal. <laughs> Everything that could possibly go wrong did go. And actually my experience is not so much goes wrong. I mean. Any, any machine can break or go wrong, but they, they tend not to. Absolutely, yep. So the, the routine maintenance is a lot less because, uh, as we know, there's no engine oil, there's no drive belts, so all of that stuff is yeah. gone. And certainly in terms of the reliability, they are a lot more reliable as well. Of course, we want these cars to last for the long term. You know, people are making a big investment in buying a car. Also, from a sustainability point of view, the longer the car lasts, then um, yeah. that is, is better for the, the overall picture of building the car and its, its whole life. So that's what we're all about. Yeah. So how long has Hevra been running now? Um, so we started in 2017. Um, so um, this year we'll have been going for five years and it's, it's obviously grown and grown as uh, we've got more member garages on board and obviously there's more vehicles on the road and obviously our knowledge base has expanded hugely as well. Now we've, we've got more repairs under our belt. And that presumably is it's really good sort of cross fertilization If there's one group that has really had a lot of experience, they can then share that with the other, other members. Absolutely. And, and that's what the whole network is all about. And we have a central R&D department as well. So if there's a particularly difficult problem, we can sort of take ownership of that problem, find a solution, and then share that across the network. So potentially what can be a real head scratcher one week, the following week can be common knowledge uh, among hundreds of garages across the country. Right, that is a real advantage. Because then that's one of the things I've heard recently. I'm very used to hearing about range anxiety, charger anxiety more recently, because of you know, people want, wanting to rely on public chargers, but then repair anxiety simply because you know, when I first got an electric car, I didn't know where to take it. You know, the, the, the local dealers <laughs> that sold the car, they didn't know. Well, they didn't well, know what to do back then. That was a long time ago. But. Yeah, of course. And um, yeah, absolutely. This is, this is a problem. And I think especially for people who perhaps their first electric car, they're buying second hand. They quite sensibly are nervous to buy a car and, unless they know that it can be repaired if something does go wrong. And as we've talked about, generally the reliability is a lot better, the routine maintenance is a lot less, but we're here to reassure people that, that if some of the potentially expensive bits go wrong, then it might not be as expensive as, as you might expect. Right. And then one of the aspects that I'm aware of is that you, you, if you go to the sort of official dealer of that make and there's some, there is a fault with the car, they're going to tend to kind of rip something out and put something very expensive in and charge you a lot of money. I mean, is that, 
is that a fair criticism? Yes, and in, in fairness to some of the dealers, that isn't always their fault because sometimes the problem is the manufacturer and they will only make something available as a whole unit and, and the dealer has to follow that, so it's only available as one part. Um, and we also see a problem as well where something is available as separate parts, um, but the, the garage in question doesn't have the expertise to determine which one it is, so they just change everything. And th that is certainly where we can help by having that expertise to, to narrow down the problem further. So, and those things you, we, the, the, the items we've got here, I mean, that looks to the layperson outside the industry terrifyingly <laughs> complex. And I, have, and I, don't, I, haven't, I haven't got a clue what that is. It's yeah, so um, this is from a Renault, and um, we, we think Renault are doing quite a good job with this because this um, is actually available with lo as lots of separate parts. So that's, that's really good from a repair point of view. This is a power electronics module, and it goes under the bonnet, it attaches to the motor, um, and this contains all the um, high voltage electronics for charging and for driving within this one unit. Um, but what's really good is we've, we've got lots of separate parts inside. So we've got a power supply for the air conditioning. We've got lots of bits of the charging system here. This is used for driving and for charging. And this powers all the low voltage parts of the car, like your headlights and your windscreen wipers. But all of these bits are available as separate parts. And that, they're available from an official Renault, from, from Renault, Renault parts? Yeah, I mean, so right. when we have examples like this, it's, it's purely a case of having the expertise to know which bit is causing the problem. Um, we we can then strip it all down, we can replace whatever bits are necessary and, and get and the car back And obviously you're saving, well not only saving costs, but you're also saving materials. I and mean, if, that's a big lump of stuff. Absolutely, yeah. So, you know, if, if it's this bit that's gone wrong, for example, you, you can replace that bit and, and you don't need you to do buy that. all these bits right. you don't need. So uh, this, is, this is the opposite example, unfortunately. So th this is from a Mitsubishi and this is a part that goes in the battery pack. Right. So um, this measures the voltage of the individual cells and, and the temperatures and things like that. One of our member garages found a problem with this and that this would need replacing to, to get the car back on the road. But this is only available from Mitsubishi as a whole battery pack at a cost of over £12,000. <laughs> so if, if the, uh, the fault is only in that circuit board, you've got to replace the entire battery? Yes. What, what we've actually done is we've developed a solution to this particular problem and the part that fails <laughs> is that... You're kidding. So um, there, will there be... There are people in existence now who have paid a huge amount of money to replace a battery when the only thing was wrong is, some, is a component like that? Well, that, that is, is certainly possible. I, I think, to be honest, the more uh, popular outcome is that the car would just reach the end of the road because right. it, it would exceed the value of the car. So by, by developing repairs like this, we yeah. can keep those cars on the road for much longer. Well, that is crazy. So there's a much bigger aspect than just having an organisation that makes sure that people repair cars safely. I mean, what you're doing, that you're really challenging, the, in a way, the old ethos of just chuck it away and do a new and get a new one. It, ab absolutely, and if, if you imagine your local village garage, they might have one customer who has this particular make of car, and they could never justify working out exactly what the problem is. But it, when we've got um, garages all over the country, we can develop this repair once, share it across the whole network, and keep loads of cars on the road that, that might suffer the same issue. So at the start, you mentioned there were three different types of garage which I really like that that, that description but how, how do, do, would a garage become sort of acceptable to you so that it was sort of Hevra regulated? Um, a lot of people don't realise this but the, the motor trade in the UK is, is not regulated or licensed in any way so um, you, you don't need any qualifications to start a garage or become a mechanic so this was another motivation for setting it up so what we need from the garage is um, they need to have a level three EV repair qualification and there, there's two different awarding bodies and, and various training providers that can provide that training. In order to do that they would already have to have prior knowledge of all the mechanical parts of the car, brake steering, suspension, all that sort of stuff. Once they're on board with us, we then provide them with our vehicle specific documentation. So if you say, for example, um, you've been on your, your level three training course, you've, you've learned all about the high voltage system, you've learned the principles of how it works, and you've got a bit of hands-on experience as part of your training. If you did all your training on, on for example, a Nissan Leaf, if you've then got a Jaguar I-Pace coming in the workshop, there's, there's lots of technical differences between those two vehicles. So you can look at our documentation and become familiar with that before you see that car for the first time. So even the first time you ever see that car in your workshop, you're, you would already be familiar with it. Right. right. And that makes a really big difference, you know, from the point of view of confidence of a customer, 
knowing that that's happening is, is very it, it, reassuring. Absolutely, yeah. And, um, you know, from the customer's point of view, they can find a garage on our website. Well, that was going to ask, how, how, would, how would me as an EV driver find out where to take my car? Yep, so um, if you're in the UK, it's um, hevra.org.uk. Um, if you're overseas, then it's fixev.org and you find a garage and you know they've got the qualifications, they've got the tools, they've got access to our vehicle specific information, um, but they've also got our technical support as well. So if they've got a question, they can get in touch with us and, and we can work with them to get to the bottom of it. So that's good to know that it's not just the UK then, this is, this is, you are connected to, to companies outside the UK. The original plan was always the UK and that's, that plan has come to fruition and we, we never planned originally overseas expansion, but what we found is the things we set up Hever to avoid in the UK were happening abroad so we found that people were scrapping cars for things that in our opinion were quite easily repairable so we, we've just extended it to anywhere that has the same cars as us and I mean I think the key thing we should mention is that the, the you know the electronics the drive system the batteries totally different to a, a petrol or diesel car but the actual running gear the lights the wipers the wheels the tires the steering the brakes that's very very similar I and mean, you know that's yeah, we're all very used to that. Yeah, it, it is very, very similar to, to more traditional vehicles. I mean, um, this other thing I've brought here, this is a steering joint from a Nissan and that's just got a bit of wear and tear in it as, as could happen on any vehicle. But it's important to, to point out as well that we do actually collate information on, on the entire vehicle. So the support we provide to our members and the information that we share between members isn't just related to this, it actually relates to the whole car. So if you've got a problem with your, your headlight or you, you make a funny noise when you go over bumps or something, then these are all things we can help with as well. And I mean, presumably just like traditional cars or old fashioned cars as I like to call them, there are certain makes where there'll be a certain little faultette <laughs> that kind of raises its head quite quickly. You know, I've often heard that with, oh, well, you know, you've got a such and such car. Yes, the, the brakes are always a bit dodgy on them, whatever, yeah, whatever Absolutely, it is. Yeah. yeah. And this is, um, you know, although, although this stuff isn't drastically different to traditional cars, that, you know, that, that is a benefit to using an EV specialist. They've probably seen Dozens a of huge them, yeah. numbers of that yeah. same model before, and they'll be familiar with all the common issues and how to fix them. Such a good idea, and it makes so much sense. And I think particularly as there's now a growing second-hand market, that's more, more of an issue because you think well I bought this car I've never driven an electric car before what the hell do I do with it how do I take it to get service to get looked after to get an MOT all those things are you know would be a mystery then if that was your first time uh, absolutely yeah and we're keen to promote the website to um, not only EV drivers as well but also potential EV drivers and if there are people out there who are, are perhaps nervous about buying an EV this is this is another piece of the puzzle that will, will hopefully um, persuade them that it may be a good option for them. Yeah, very good bit of reassurance to know that's that's there in the background if you need it. But I know it is wonderful what you're doing. I really, I'm, and I'm extra thrilled because you're going to be at Fully Charged Live this year, which is really good. So there's going to be a lot of people coming along to see you there. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. So we've, we've enjoyed it when we've done the show before. It's always great to speak to, because we're EV owners ourselves, and it's, it's great to speak to other EV owners about what we do. And if they've got any questions, then um, yeah, come and find us. Last year, was there quite a lot of people coming up and chatting with you? Yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, it, it's great to, you know, um, some people really like to know all the technical details and we yeah. can do that and, and other people are less so and yeah, it's just really nice to speak to. But it's so good that you're discovering these things, that, you know, that really are really important from the point of view of the longevity of the vehicle, the fact that you can, you know, that is such a brilliant example and, and you any kind of classic of the world we live in, that there's this tiny little thing that you can replace at minuscule cost, which saves an enormous amount of, you know, not just financial waste, but environmental problems and everything. Absolutely, yeah, it's great for sustainability, it's great for EV drivers, and it's, it's also great for the future of the motor trade as well. So this is keeping people employed, um, repairing cars, keeping them on the road, and it, it's a win-win. Well, thanks so much, Peter. Really, I'm really impressed with what you're doing. It's, it's fantastically important, and I think actually encourages more people to, to try an EV and, 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 and make that step. I think it's a really good thing. Congratulations, and we'll see you at Fully Charged Live. So there we go, what a brilliant thing. All the links uh, about Hebra are in the, the show notes beneath this episode, and as are the links to our Patreon page and uh, the subscribe and YouTube membership and everything about Fully Charged Plus. Please do keep watching because we've got some amazing episodes coming up. Uh, but that's it, as always. If you have been, thank you for watching.